Welcome, Dr. Mandel here. Uh, this video is probably one of the most important videos you're going to hear about magnesium. My intention is to give you lots of great information as fast as I can, but I'm going to talk about the different types of magnesiums and which magnesiums work best for which or certain conditions we can say. So let's get going. Uh, about magnesium, we realize magnesium is good for many, many things. Uh, the first thing we think of is sleep quality, uh, heart disease, cardiovascular problems. It helps improve blood pressure. But there are many different forms of magnesium, and many of them absorb better than others. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But magnesium is a mineral that's critical for our entire body. I would say about 350 different uh, functions, enzyme functions are related to magnesium that goes on with our body. So this affects so many different levels when it comes to keeping our bones strong, uh, when it comes to our immune system, particularly we look at uh, COVID because uh, COVID uh, has a relationship with low vitamin D levels, but magnesium has a direct relationship with, uh, with vitamin D. Uh, but when it comes to that, let me just say this, uh, when it comes to getting the vitamin D, you need magnesium to regulate and get the vitamin D to the proper levels. So magnesium is a key player with vitamin D, which is directly related to our immune system. But magnesium affects our DNA. It affects our nerve and muscles. When you get muscle cramps, uh, tingling in the nerves, we, if you have low amounts of energy, as well as insomnia, difficulty sleeping, it can really do wonders for you, as well as women who have PMS problems Magnesium can really uh, do wonders as well. But the key player with magnesium, that I'm a big believer, that every disease, the common denominator is inflammation. And magnesium helps reduce the inflammatory markers of the body. And by reducing inflammation, that's how we can say it reduces uh, not only pain, but what about like heart disease? What about placking with any arteries? All that is related to inflammation. So low magnesium levels appear to affect many different things directly and indirectly because they have a direct influence uh, with uh, hormones in our body. And obviously our hormones uh, is a big key player. Uh, a couple of things I want to mention, those people who are taking uh, proton pump inhibitors acid for acid reflux uh, or certain medications that halt the acid, uh, you're usually going to have low magnesium levels. Uh, people who are insulin resistant are usually going to have low level of magnesium. Uh, magnesium uh, is tied directly into people with low levels, that is, with uh, depression and anxiety. I'm just kind of going through this quick. I'm not going to go into depth right here. And those people who are taking like Fosamax or certain types of medications to treat osteoporosis, usually you will see low levels of magnesium that goes along with diuretics, that goes along with certain blood pressure medications as well as antibiotics. So if you are on certain types of drugs, it's always good to uh, bring this to your doctor's attention uh, so he can check into that and make sure you're doing okay. So let's go to the uh, nuts and bolts. And I kind of laid this out for my behalf, so I don't want to really miss anything. I'm going to go right through it real quick. Uh, this will be a big asset for many of you. Let's talk about the most readily absorbed uh, magnesiums. And we'll just real quick, uh, the citrates, the aspartates, the three and eights, the uh, glycinates, the malates, the orotates, as well as the torates, all right? The less uh, absorbed, really only two of them, the magnesium oxides and magnesium, uh, really the sulfates, but you don't have to worry about the sulfates because the sulfate is uh, theoretically just your uh, magnesium salts. And uh, that is something that's more applied to the outside of the skin, but there are people that claim that uh, taking, you know, uh, those types of, uh, uh, salt baths can get the magnesium to penetrate into our skin. Uh, it's not all that much, but I'm not going to spend time on that. So let's go to the uh, comparison map, and we'll just go through it real quick. Magnesium chloride uh, is obviously the elemental uh, uh, key component is uh, chlorine. When it's mixed with chlorine, that's how you get magnesium chloride. And this is mainly for heartburn, constipation, sore muscles. Uh, and obviously, topically, that's applied. Uh, now, the key ones are your citrates and your glycinates. Your magnesium citrates, you'll see a lot of the different 
uh, vitamin companies selling them in powder. So I'm not going to go ahead and mention names. This has an, a constipation effect, that, a, a laxative effect that if you have constipation. Uh, but this, if you take too much of it, it will definitely give you the runs. But uh, if you are taking the right dosage, you usually should be okay. The one thing that is good about magnesium citrate is the absorbability is very, very good. Uh, they use this with migraines, mood swings, mood swings, as well as anxiety and depression. The good thing about glycinate uh, is that you're not going to have the side effects and you will get good absorbability. Uh, this is great for stresses, anxiety, insomnia, uh, conditions related to even the muscle relaxation, sleep, blood pressure. Uh, it does do the job. Remember, all these different uh, acids are helping magnesium, the elemental magnesium get into your body. So if you get the L, if you get magnesium in your body, you're going to have good effects. So it's all about the absorption. Uh, then you have the uh, magnesium threonates. And threonates, we think of the brain. Uh, this is a threonic acid. And basically, these are neurological issues, ADHD, ADD, dementia, anxiety, depression, uh, problems with neurological uh, uh, things with uh, memory. That all is great because the three and eights are known to get into the brain where the other magnesiums are not. Then you have magnesium malate, uh, great for chronic pain, uh, fatigue, low. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, actually a really good absorbability rate, uh, but again, you may have to take a little bit more uh, of this. So I just want to let you know, and there are some other companies who have uh, their brand on it, which I'm not going to mention. You have magnesium orotate. Uh, this is for cardiovascular support. You have magnesium oxides, and a lot of the oxides out there are being sold like crazy because they're cheap, because they get very, very little absorption. But I want to mention some about oxides. Um, the oxide has the highest amount of elemental magnesium per weight, but is really the most poorly absorbed. Now, I've taken oxides in the past because a lot of the vitamins uh, of, of minerals are, are combined and there's oxides in it, but I felt that it did okay for me, but I needed to take more of it to work better. But as I took more, it gave me some cramps and put me right to the can. So I just want to let you know that that will really get your colon stimulated. Uh, the magnesium sulfate, you don't have to worry about. That is Epsom salt. That's more topically. Uh, that's for sore muscles and stress relief. And the last one is magnesium taurate. And taurates are great for cardiovascular function. This helps improve blood sugar and blood pressure. So those people who have, are insulin resistant, uh, type 2 diabetes, or even type 1 diabetes, uh, you may want to look into magnesium taurates. Again, you may have to take a little more of these as compared to other ones. Uh, certain magnesium tablets are bigger than others. Some are combined. But again, over the two between... Uh, which I think is great absorbability would be your citrates. Uh, it's very popular. You'll see it in a lot of vitamin stores, magnesium. Um, uh, let me go back here. Your glycinates, uh, which I think is great because this will still give you that, that, that calming effect and that glycine within there is a good neurotransmitter, which is, uh, affects the chemicals in the brains. And obviously this will help improve sleep as well as a healthy circadian rhythm. Uh, also, with the glycinates, uh, it does work with GABA. It gives you that that calmness, that feeling of just you know serenity, relaxation. But remember, magnesium is magnesium. It's just a matter of how it gets into your system. Now, many of you are asking, do I have to take a, a supplement all the time? The answer is no. If you're getting the right foods, uh, like your legumes, your black beans, your edamame, or just some, just mentioning a few, you can Google the other ones. Uh, your spinach, kale, your greens, your avocado, your dark le leafy vegetables, your nuts, your almonds, peanuts, cashews, as well as your whole grains, your oatmeal, whole wheat, as well as even dark chocolate, whole grains, and brown rice. So I hope that this information really helps you. I just want to just review a couple important things. Number one, um, I would say 50, 60 percent of the population is deficient uh, in magnesium. We don't know the type of soils that we're getting our foods from, number one. Uh, also, realize it has many different functions, critical roles, critical roles, not only with uh, what we talked about before, but your thyroid function, your estrogen, your detoxification, as you say, stress hormones, as well as blood sugar, as well as many more. Um, 
And there are some correlations between PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, that are low in magnesium, something that your doctor will never tell you about, that by increasing your magnesium may do wonders for you, as well as thyroid people, uh, thyroid hypothyroidism. Uh, you may want to look into that as well because you're going to have low thyroid levels. And lastly, as we talked about, people who are in acid refluxes, who have acid reflux, who are medications with proton pump inhibitors or acid uh, inhibitors, uh, this is something you will really want to check into the, of low magnesium levels. But pertaining to how much you should be taking, um, the average, they say women's about 320 milligrams a day, men 420 milligrams. I like to say everyone between 350 to 450 milligrams. Uh, but see my other videos uh, about magnesium, about making sure you're getting the right elemental magnesium. Because when you read uh, the, the bottles, even though it may say uh, 600 milligrams magnesium, you may only be getting 150 per, per pill. You may have to take four pills depending upon which one. So read the ingredients really well uh, and the dosages and the recommendations, and you can calculate how much elemental magnesium you're getting. I really think I went through this quick, as fast as I could. I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope this really helps you listen to this video over and over. It's really pretty comprehensive. It kind of gives you an overview of which magnesiums do what, and uh, please share this uh, with your friends and family. Uh, leave your comments below. Hopefully there will be many so other people can learn from each other. I really appreciate your time. And uh, most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.